It's Sunday night yet again. Come on in and join me. We've got a full moon rising out there. Amazing energy coming forward. Come on in and join me for a few moments. Terry Ann Hyman here, Natural Forces Studio in the Empowered Spirit Circle on Facebook. I know it's beautiful here in the South. We've had such a gorgeous weekend. You're probably still out playing. But if not, come on and join me for a few minutes. We're going to talk about this amazing full moon coming in, about the shift of energy and all those things that have been stirring up. So let me know you're here. Give me a thumbs up. Tell me what's going on for you. How do you prepare for the full moon? What are you noticing about this crazy energy going on? Hey there, Thelma. Thanks for joining us. There has been so much intense energy all spring. Coming into this new year, really crazy. And this full moon, this is one of my most favorite full moons of the year. Hey, Millie, how are you? This is definitely one of my most favorite full moons. The Wiesach moon, where they say that all the spiritual energy gathers in the Himalayans. All of them are there meditating now. The holy men, the spiritual leaders, the Buddhists, the monk, come together to really have a raise the vibration of humanity at this time. We call it the Wiesach moon. It's generally that time around now when the sun sign moves into Taurus. Very intense moons, one of the most powerful ones. Some consider it the birth of Buddha. We have the Christ consciousness and Buddha consciousness coming together. So it really is a time to capture that energy, to imagine the hearing, hear those chantings and the sounds and all that vibration coming through that is helping to raise the consciousness all around us. We need it. We need it. We need it. We need it. We definitely do. So it's a great time to prepare for that, to sitting in the energy, to really being open to what is going on. Really, really important. Yes, it has been very intense. I have Scorpio rise in Thelma, so I totally understand Things are being stirred up, but this is not just recent. This is going all the way back to even last year, last year. And I think we go all the way through to the fall with the Scorpio energy. Scorpio has the ability to just to kind of move things up. So when we've got the moon in Scorpio and we've got all this other aspects going on, yes. Yes, yes, yes. A lot of things will be churned up. We're asked to look at a lot of that stuff about ourselves, right? So this energy coming in, there's this whole thing going on about death and rebirth and letting go and releasing and getting out of your own way all this kind of energy the sun and the moon are kind of like close square aspects to the north and the south node north and south node what is that about that's about our soul purpose and it's also about where we hang out or we're not living our soul purpose so you're going to be asked to really look at these things in your life you're going to be asked to really look at what is the challenge what is the struggle for you so if you're doing your work, if you have a spiritual practice, this is why we want a spiritual practice. You're going to be able to push forward. You're going to be able to move through these transformations. You really are. If you're struggling, if you don't have a practice, if you aren't able to sit still, you're going to feel it. You're going to feel that uh, tension back and forth and back and forth, especially over the next couple of 28, 48 hours. You're going to feel it even more. And then... You got to go, what the heck, right? But if you're doing your work and you can prepare to harness the energy, you can really push yourself forward, push yourself through that transformation, push yourself to move really a lot of stuff going on. So Thelma's saying she has a lot of stuff going on, but her body says, no, Thelma, we have to honor our body. Hey, we're all aging, right? I'm there with you. We all are aging. We have to honor our body. And what is the body telling us? And generally, in my practice, when something is with the body, what is underneath? About 85% of what's going on in the body has unresolved emotional issues underneath. So when the moon gets full, when this energy builds, that emotional body is really pushing on you too. So I ask you, where can you look beneath the surface? Where can you let go and where can you really just open up? Yes, we're definitely going to see that. Right now, those patterns, those places that you keep finding yourself repeating and repeating, you're going to feel that. That is the struggle right there. So we need to let it go. You need to burn it away. Do some rituals. Do some things. I'm going to show you a few tonight that you could do. But definitely, that is part of it. And actually, on the Empowered Spirit Show this week, I'm actually going to do an on-live Akashic Record reading. Yes, one of my clients have come forward. I'm going to do a reading. And this is exactly the energy that she's going forward. She's like, something keeps getting in her way. She keeps trying to get through it, and she can't. So it's really important. And so we uncover some of what that is for her to help her move those blocks. You can do the same thing. When we find out what it is, we do some of that work to help us move forward. So check it out this week. It's an Akashic Record reading live. 
It's a little long. We kind of went over that 30 minute mark. It's about 50 minutes, but it's really quite fascinating. I get into talking about the records and what I see. And she talks about how she feels this and how these things can really help her now to go forward and move through and open up and get out of her own way. That's exactly what this energy is calling you to do right now. It really is. It really is. Sorry, just got a message there. You never know. Hey, Sean, thanks for joining us. So tonight, there's several things that you could do. Um, there's several things that you could do to get yourself ready, all right? I've been posting a little bit. Maybe you've caught some of that. One is to, like, gather your crystals, all right? Go ahead and get them and then cleanse them. How do we do that? I like to take sage. You can do sound bowls. You can do intentions. You can use Reiki energy. You can apply the Reiki two symbols. This is a head key. And we just kind of go through and we cleanse them, thank them for their work, ask them to release, let go. So that's one of the things we do. I have my beautiful moon here with me tonight. So we cleanse it away. You could do that too. And then you can put them outside or you could put them in your window seal. That's up to you. Put them in a seal that catches the moon, right? It's vibration and put that intention there. Also tonight, and I know every full moon is really good for collecting water, but this one particularly, there is a water ceremony that happens in the Himalayans. So get you a vase. This vase is, oh, this is ancestral vase for my family. Capri fill it with water. Put it out there to capture that energy, and then you can drink through it as you move through this week. Definitely reuse it to water your plants, water your family, <laughs> water your altar, all those kind of things. You can definitely do that. Totally forgot to share this. Let me take a moment. If you could, too, share this out for me. So it gets found. Push share button at the bottom there. Let me see if I can find it. I'm going to share it out too. I want you guys to have the opportunity to pass this on. I don't see it. Let me see if I can find it. But it's really important that we do these, these kind of rituals. This will help your spiritual practice. This will help you to feel that strength that comes from deep in your soul. That's what this work is all about right now. That soul work that is helping you to open up. So when we do these kind of rituals... When we do, I've totally lost where I am. Okay, let me let me focus for a moment. Hey, Brett, how are you? How's everything? Brett, we're talking about things that you could do this evening to really capture, here we go, to really capture the energy and the vibration of what is going on. Really important. Cleanse your crystals, set them outside. Cleanse, get a big, nice thing of water. Okay, share on my timeline. Sorry, it's always confusing. All right, also you can... No, that's okay. It always happens. I'm actually trying to share this because I totally forgot. So if you're around and can push the share button, that would be great. All right, here we go. Last share. There we go. Energy focus of the week. There we go. Okay, sorry. So we're talking about all the ways that we can do and harness this energy. All right, so the last couple of days, I've been cleansing my crystals. I've been trying to figure out what is the intentions for me. I was up at the medicine wheel yesterday. That was beautiful, beautiful day. Set the whole grid, set beautiful intentions, really powerful. And then now we do the same with my personal crystals, do the same with yours. So clear them away. Now, you can either program them now to catch the moonlight. I personally, this is personal, I like to let the moon soak them in. Then when they're nice and full, then I program them. So we've got between this evening, this evening is the full moon around 9, I think, central time. So all of this is very intense. Right now is when you want to do it. So it's up to you. Program it right now. Put them out. Let the moon feel. Then program, fill them up. Then program them. That is up to you. Just do it, right? Just do it and put the intentions you know, manifest, magnify, courage, strength to move forward. These are the things that you're asking for right now. These are the things that you want to be held in these crystals so that when you come in and when you come around them, your vibration can resonate. It can help to hold. That's what crystals love to do. That's the beauty of them. We just need to tell them. We need to tell them what we want and we thank them. That's the cleansing. And then we put that new energy in there. Brett, exactly how we were saying just now, you program it by cleansing it away and then you hold it. What is the intention? All right, this is a moon. This is for all my spiritual knowledge, all my intuitive knowledge, all that seeing I do. Freshen it up. Make it strong. And so I put that intention. That's what we call programming. All right, we put that intention in there for this to hold that. All right, I'm constantly around this one. So this is where I connect with that moon, the energy, keep that vibration it will help to raise the vibration around you. That's what we want to do. 
all right? If you've had yours on the windowsill for about a week or so, cleanse them up. Take them down. Reprogram them, all right? That's what we want. So even if it's the same intention, just freshen it up. Ask it to do work for you. This is a magnifier for me. Same thing. Magnify my intentions. Hold that energy for me. Let the vibration raise, and then we put them down. So it's a really good idea to reprogram them and refresh them this evening. And then the water ceremony. They do this in the Himalayans. I like to imagine, visualize, pretend, bring it in. This water is carrying that vibration coming all the way from the Himalayans. Why not? Sound travels. Why not? Why not? I like to pretend early in the morning. Can I hear it? Can my ears bring in that toning and that humming and that chanting that they do? I like to believe I can tap into it. And you can do the same. Energy follows intention. So that's how we go about working with this energy over the next 24 hours, all right? Another couple hours, you're going to start to see it outside. And just take a moment and just stand in it and just feel that radiant energy coming forward. That's what we do right now. That's exactly what we do. So as we go through the week, we're going to have this intense energy tomorrow, all right? So tomorrow and Tuesday, you're going to be feeling like you're gathering energy, gathering energy. By Wednesday, you're going to have a better idea of the bigger picture, how you can move forward, how you can work through some of this, all right? Thursday and Friday, even into Saturday, is great for problem solving, productivity, get your work done. So bring that energy in. Take a moment each day, offer gratitude. Release it out into the universe and notice as you move through this week, that's exactly what you're going to feel like too. So use your energy as best you can. Focus it to really pull it in the beginning of the week. Wednesday, you're going to see a bigger picture. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, you'll even have more energy to be more productive as we move through. So let's just take a moment and center our energy, all right, and we'll pull them in. What does Thelma say? If we set them outside, the crystals have to be directly, I think they can be in the shade, just somewhere where the moon is coming, Right? I mean, even if it's clouds, right? We still get the benefits. So do the best you can. Energy follows intention. That's the main thing when you're setting it out there. What is your intention for putting them out there? See if you can be around it. But again, even if there were clouds, that vibration, all the planets put out vibration, right? They all put out vibration. That's what they do. All right, so let's take a moment and focus our energy. Just pull it all in. Exhale away. Take a nice deep inhale and exhale away. Pulling all your energy back, calling back all the scattered energy that you may have set out there this week, pulling it back in. Let yourself come back into the present moment. Take a deep inhale, feel the feet on the floor, bring the energy up through the feet, through the legs, through the first chakra, all the way up into the heavens. And as you exhale, send it all the way down deep into the earth. Inhaling and exhaling, sending it all the way down deep into the earth. And again, bring that breath up from the earth. Feel that connection. Let it come through the body, opening up the vertical channel all the way up into the heavens. And as you exhale, bring in that cosmic energy all the way through the body. Circulate through that first chakra and send it back down deep into the earth. And let us just call in. Call in our masters, our teachers. Call in your higher self. Align with your spiritual guides. Bring them in for you this week. As we open up to the energy of this full moon, ask for the spiritual knowledge to come forward. Ask for your intuitive abilities to grow. Ask for the intentions to move forward, to move into that transformative energy for you. Ask to release all that stuff that doesn't work. Call it in as we honor where we are right here, right in the middle of the spring season, right in that midpoint somewhere around there. We honor that. We honor these intentions. We will feel the shift as we move forward this week. Inhaling. And just exhale away. Feel the energy coming right into the center. And just take a moment. Imagine all your crystals around you. Even if they're outside, just bring the awareness of them in with you. Feel the energy of Reiki moving through, charging those crystals, or just feel the universal life force, charging them all for the highest good. Setting those intentions for yourself, setting those intentions for mankind, for all of us right now. Let us raise the vibration 
Be that light worker. You could do this. Make these shifts. Inhaling and exhaling. Fear that spiritual body aligning with the physical body. Shoulders and shoulders, hips and hips, feet and feet. Becoming very present with where you are. Just letting the mind settle for a moment. Inhaling. And exhaling. Feel how good that feels. Coming back, bringing the awareness back as we go to look to the wisdom of the tarot for answers, for questions. See what we can find out. Coming back, opening the eyes. So I'm picking from the good tarot. I just happen to love this around this time when the moon is full and the energy is really beautiful and positive. So if you didn't have a chance to pick a card earlier, this is what they looked like, right? Pick a card, one, two, or three, and ask about your own transformation right now. What is the next step for you? All right, let's ask that question. As we go to look at the universal card, I love this. It's such a perfect card. I couldn't ask for a better choice. Ten of fire. All right, so fire is like the wands in most of the tarot decks. See all the fire around? It's time to be done. All this stuff moving around, all these distractions that get in our way, it's time. Perfect. It is time for you to put those fires out. They're done. Tens are about completion. So what can you complete right now? And maybe it's stuff that's been in your way that's been bothering you for a long time. That's some of that deep Scorpio energy. Release it out. Let it go. It is done. That is for all of us, okay? Cosmos are confirming. So if you chose one, two, or three, this is a little bit of how you can use this energy to let you let that go, if that makes sense. So number one is the five of earth. Earth is about our pentacles, our money, our abundance. Five is about change. This card also happens to represent the idea of being more creative, using alternative ways of bringing in abundance, even raising your wealth consciousness. That's really highly important. I know it's kind of hard to see. See the yellow? Here we go. See the pentacles here? See the yellow and the earth? And that's really opening up that third chakra, believing in your work, believing in the energy of the universe, believing that you can bring forward all the abundance that you need. And many times, and I've seen this, I've seen this, I've seen this. Many times people let money get in their way. Oh, I can't do this. Oh, I can't afford to do this. Oh, I can't afford to get help. Oh, I can't afford to move forward. Oh, I can't afford to change my job. The universe is asking us to do our purpose, to really get in there and make these shifts. And this is how you can let go of some of that excess energy. Believing in yourself. Yes, that's exactly true. So if you chose the second card, number two, it's the Ace of Water. All right, this is all about new love. I love this. Look at the seahorse. Look at the moon. Look at that resonance there. This is about loving yourself unconditionally, bringing in new love for you first and foremost, which then it opens up to loving others, right? But this is that new energy, that vibration of love coming forward, spring love all around. Really beautiful time to do that. And then if you chose number three, we've had this card, probably last full moon, the king of fire. This is all about that spiritual energy, all about that spiritual knowledge. Believe in it. Have the confidence. Take that wisdom in for you. Look at his heart. Look at his crown. Look at even his hair coming down. That's all that wisdom. That's the wisdom of fire and passion and spiritual energy. Use that as a guide. Ask yourself, let me be helped. What can I do? And that's going to help move that old stuff away. It also brings in trust. Trust, trust, trust. Trust your intuitiveness. Trust the abundant flow of the universe. It is there. All right, Brett, great. You chose three. So really the cards, they come in to remind us to really let that shit go. Just let it go. It's time. Put those fires out. Move it out of your way so that you can open up to the change in your work and your abundance. Know that the confidence is there for you. New love. Ace of water, new emotional energy, unconditional coming forward. All right. And then the king of fire is that confidence to build your practice, to have that spiritual knowledge, to take it forward out into the world. Right? How beautiful is that as we move to this high energy moon? Really beautiful as we think about all those holy men gathering, the birth of the Christ consciousness and Buddha coming together. All right, got another message. Yes, definitely coming in for that. Really important as we open up to this energy. It really is. Don't let that stuff get in your way. Don't. Get rid of it. Just the chatter of the mind half the time. There's techniques that you can do. There's tapping. 
ways to get it all out that you can move forward. Definitely. Let me know if you have any questions. I've got another message coming in over there. Let me know if you have any questions about the cards and how they came up for you. Let me know if I can need any clarity. Also, don't forget this week with the um, podcast, Empowered Spirit Circle. You can find it on my website, terryannhyman.com. It's got a great reading. It really is. It's amazing how much she resonated with it and how this was able to move stuff out of her way. When we do the Kashuk readings, they really are healings. They really help us to go forward. Definitely. That we do. All right, guys. It's going to be an intense week tonight. Get outside. Pull the energy of the moon in, whether you put your crystals outside or on your window seal. Do something about that. Brett's asking about tapping, emotional freedom technique. You can go to my website. I wrote a book about it, Brett, Confessions of a Shower Tapper. Natural Forces Studio, Confessions there. You'll see it or you can Google it. Natural Forces Studio, emotional freedom technique is what it stands for. But you work on the meridians of the body. You get all that chatter out, all those limited beliefs. It's one of the most amazing techniques. Google it. You can find more with the tapping solution or private message me and I can give you some more information as well. Tapping, I love it. I tap in the shower all the time. It's an amazing technique. We have so many techniques. We really do. So whether it's tapping or Reiki or crystals or sound or light or whatever it is, there's so many things that you can do to build your spiritual practice. Why do we need a spiritual practice? <sighs> It gives you enrichment of your life. It helps you to build the confidence. It helps you to understand your energy. So when things are in chaos, you have the tools. We all go through stuff, all right? I've been through some of my own just recently. But I have the tools to work through it. I have the tools to listen to myself and say, what is going on? Oh, you need to slow down, right? We have these tools. Because every day we sit and we listen and we meditate and we breathe and we get to know who we are. Maybe you have empathic energy. That needs a lot of practice working with, right? You need to know where your boundaries are. You need to know when you're taking in other people's energy. A spiritual practice will teach you that. It really will. And they can be fun. They can be creative. We were doing it in the Empowered Spirit Group a couple of weeks ago. Started by creating a sacred space. And each day you sit in it and you just breathe or you play, play cards. You can play cards. You can draw cards. Use crystals. You can do a spiritual bath. You can have all these many kind of rituals. That will build your spiritual practice. So then tonight, when that moon comes in, you just add that ritual of the moon into your practice and it builds that energy. It helps you to build your vibration, exactly what we need right now. For all of us to put this work out there, to be at peace, to be centered in our body, to be responsible for our energy, right? Really important that we're responsible for our energy. So much is going on out in the world. That is exactly what we need to do. All right, so check out the podcast. Really interesting. Also, I'm going to be doing a pop-up May 12th down at Chocolata down here in Birmingham. I'm going to be doing some readings and have some of my jewelry. She's got amazing chocolate. She's going to have some really great gift boxes for moms of chocolate. Kathy Dextino, awesome. So come down and watch. Come down and, and get a reading. Get some chocolates. That's Saturday the 12th, all right? I'll be down there doing readings as well. And listen to the podcast. If you're interested in a Koshik record, private message me. Let me know. Hey, Bailey, I saw your message. Come in. Yes, let's find time to get together. All right, guys, let's just end with the Great Invocation. The Great Invocation came in originally by Alice Bailey, who came in to really put this peace on earth, to really have the awareness, no matter what religion. It has nothing to do with religion. In fact, it's all about bringing all the religions together and just opening up to that spiritual energy, whether it's Christ consciousness or Buddha consciousness, Allah, Buddha, whatever it is for anybody, it's really all about raising that awareness all around, raising the spiritual vibration that we all have for each other. That is what is really important right now. And I wanted to offer Alice's Bailey's um, great invocation. Before I do that, I see a request for a card. All right, sure, Brett, let's give you a card. If anybody else wants one before I get into the great invocation, let me know. So put your question forward. If you want to do a reading, I'd try to invite you on, but I don't see it reading to do that. I was going to try and do that. I don't see what coming in. Let's see, maybe Bailey's good. All right, here we go. Brett, a card for you. The Queen of Fire. All right, still in alignment with this word, with this work, all right? The, all the cards that we've drawn, the Ten of Fire, the King of Fire. This is all about putting your, your intentions out into the world, all right? So the Queen has knowledge too, but she's also very generous and caring, shining her light for others. Don't be afraid to shine your light, all right, Brett? Don't be afraid. We've talked about this. All right, Mindy, you wanted a card too. Mindy, we got strength. 
All right, I love this card. She's right there by that, that lion. Strength, strength is that infinite possibility too. There's always both sides when we have strength. So what is it in your life right now that is asking you to find that strength to come forward? All right, really important. See how she's like holding the ear in this card. She's like touching the lion. He's roaring, but she's right there. And sometimes it takes courage and strength to do that. It really does. What is it for you? All right, what is it for you? All right, what is it that you need the strength for right now? And have the courage. Have the courage to do it. The cosmos are with us, all of us right now, and even you. All right, Brett, like that because of the king and the queen. All right, Mindy, let me know if that resonated with you. Thelma, here we go. Thelma play, put a really beautiful uh, poem in the Empowered Spirit Circle. Check it out. Thelma, I don't have availability to read it right now. But thank you for putting that in there. It's a beautiful cleansing po uh, poem for that. You do the seven of earth. Earth is about our physical plane, all right? Earth is our spiritual energy. Shape-shifting, this card always reminds me of. Look at the animals around her. Look at her mask there. Really taking that energy and really intuitively seeing. So you asked about your health, it seemed like. Intuitively look beneath. What is going on for you with that, all right? What is going on with your own physical body, all right? It's very, sevens are always about spirituality, Look beneath the surface, all right? Like we we're kind of talking about 85% emotional energy. So what can you find out as you look to the physical body to understand that for you, all right? What would you say when energy isn't received well, but you feel like you're being yourself? You just have to stand strong in your energy. That's all, all right? You don't have to make people see your side. You don't have to have them feel it for you. That gets into a little bit of that empathic nature. Just be strong in who you are, all right? State your case. It's okay. Not everybody is going to agree. I can guarantee you not everybody agrees with what I have to say, but hey, I know a lot of this works and I just stand strong in my energy. And that's all you have to do too. You can't make anybody do anything. You can't make them be happy. You can't make them feel stuff. That's up to them, right? And we want that. We want those boundaries. That's very healthy actually. So just be strong in what it is you have to offer, Brett. Shine that light. That's it. Be the example. Walk your talk. That's what I always say. We have to walk our talk. That's what we have to do. All right, any other questions? Any other things coming forward? Just check back up here and see if I missed you. I'm sorry. Hey, Kenzie. Hey, Heather. Hey, guys. Thank y'all for joining me. Sean, no card tonight? All right. I think I've gotten everybody. It's going to be an intense week. Get outside and see that moon come up. Put your intentions out there. Find some favorite crystal that you love. Put that energy in there to attract more of what you want. All right? Put it out there, okay? We've got from now about the next 24 hours. The moon is at its fullest. It's one of the most spiritual moons out there. Take it in with intention. Bring it all in. Set your water out there. Get your crystals ready. So as we go to close, as I was saying before, I wanted to offer the great invocation this great invocation was given to Alice Bailey about 1945 by the Tibetan master Dwa Kul, so that all humanity, irrespective of religion, may bring love and light to earth through our collective open heart. So just take a nice deep inhale and exhale out the great invocation. From the point of light within the mind of God, let light stream forth into the minds of men. Let light descend on earth. From the point of love within the heart of God, let love stream forth into the hearts of men. May Christ return to earth. May consciousness return to earth. From the center where the will of God is known, let purpose guide the light wills of men, the purpose which the masters know and serve. From the center which we call the race of men, let the plan of love and light work out, and may it seal the door where evil dwells. Let light and love and power Restore the plan on earth. Let light and love and peace restore the plan on earth. Let light and love and power restore the plan on earth. Have a great week. Bring this energy in. Shine light. Shine peace for all those around. Thanks for joining me. Find me on the Empowered Spirit Show this Wednesday. Subscribe, download it, you know, all that stuff. Thank you guys. Have a great week. Center, be productive, release the old as you open up to this transformative energy that is all around. To your spirit, namaste.